In today's video, we're not going to be talking about financial diversification, but rather diversifying the way you diversify when it comes to stacking the precious metals. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk about silver and also a little bit of gold as well and how to diversify the way you diversify by having a variety of different types of coins, rounds, and bars, variety of different types of metals, and a variety of different denominations. We're gonna get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new. Make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there, go check it out. The link will be in the description. And if you wanna get some DYDSS merchandise, to help support the channel, I would really, really, really appreciate it. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. But today is Tuesday, June 22nd, 2021. It is currently 79 degrees and pouring rain. So unfortunately, I can't film this video outdoors, which is what I was hoping to be able to do because why be inside when you can be outside but it's raining so i'll film inside today the current spot price of silver as i'm recording the video is 25 dollars and 75 cents a minor red day for silver down 19 cents and then as for gold 1777 dollars and 40 cents a red day for gold as well down six bucks and the current gold to silver ratio is in the 68 to 69 range of course, the numbers that I'm providing are as I'm filming the video, not as I'm editing, posting, or as you're watching it. So head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. But today, I wanted to talk about something that, believe it or not, I was supposed to actually talk about in yesterday's video. If you saw yesterday's video, it was about financial diversification. I talked about how to create a multifaceted financial preparation system for yourself. I talked a little bit about business, talked a little bit about real estate, a little bit about stocks, and quite a bit about precious metals and the importance of not putting all your eggs in one basket and being kind of spread out, having a little bit of money over here, a little bit over there, a little bit over there, a little bit over there. That way, if one thing goes down, hopefully the others will keep you afloat. And if one thing completely takes off, at least you have a little bit of skin in that game over there rather than completely neglecting that area. But that's not what I wanted to talk about in today's video. I wanted to talk about one thing in particular, and that would be the precious metals as per usual. But what I was supposed to do in yesterday's video was go into much more detail about diversifying the way you diversify rather than just talking about general diversification. Completely slipped my mind because I started talking about a variety of different things so I wanted to talk about the importance of stacking different coins, different rounds, different bars of different denominations and with different precious metals. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about this today is because I personally believe since stacking silver and gold is something that I consider to be financial preparation, in case of a rainy day or in case of some macro level large-scale economic catastrophe. I personally believe that the silver and gold may not solve the problem, but can definitely help me out a whole lot more than if I were to not have any precious metals. So I think when it comes to silver and gold, I don't think you should necessarily stick to just one or two little things. See, when I first got started stacking, I was going all in on generic silver rounds, which is fine. I was prioritizing getting the physical silver content for the lowest possible dollar amount, and I wanted pure silver at the time. And generic rounds and generic bars were probably the best way to go. A couple months later, maybe five, six months down the road, I started to understand the importance of government minted pure silver. So rather than stacking generic rounds, I started stacking mainly silver eagles with a little bit of help from the canadian maple leaf as well and from time to time i pick up a libertad a britannia a philharmonic kangaroo etc 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 and that's what i continued to do for probably about a year and then i decided that i wanted to get some pieces of silver 
of larger denominations. I wanted to start picking up maybe one or two five ounce bars. I knew there were a handful of 10 ounce bars that I wanted to get. So I started picking up some larger denomination pieces of silver. And shortly after that, I believe it was the beginning of 2019, I remember saying to myself, I was never that big of a fan of 90% silver, the quarters, dimes, and half dollars. To me, it was always incredibly boring just very dry, very dull, nothing interesting. It just looks like the spare change I've had in my pocket my entire life. It wasn't anything I was enthusiastic about, so I didn't really care much for it and I didn't prioritize it. And at the beginning of 2019, I said to myself that I want to make it a priority and a goal to include a little bit of 90% silver in every single order I place online or every single time I stop by the local coin shop. I do not want to pick up silver if I don't have at least $1 face value of 90% thrown in. So that's what I did throughout the entire year of 2019. And I picked up probably more silver in 2020 than I did in 2019. 90% silver that is, because that's almost all I got all year. 90% for probably a solid six, seven, eight months straight. I didn't pick up anything but 90%. So point being is over time, my stacking strategy has shifted quite a bit. I've gotten new ideas. I've learned new things about this over here or that over there. And I didn't necessarily do it for diversification purposes, but thankfully I ended up doing it anyway because it turned into diversification. And I think it's really important because all of these different pieces can play a different role depending on what's going on. I always talk about the larger denomination pieces of silver because that right there can get you even more money for a smaller dollar amount. I talk about how the larger denominations, the 10 ounce silver bars most specifically, but anything above that as well, which I personally don't have. All I have are 10 ounce bars, that's the highest I've gone, but 20 ounce bars, 25 ounce bars, kilo bars, 50 ounce bars, 100 ounce bars, even though they don't seem overly practical, especially if the spot price were to completely take off, could be a really good way of getting your hands on some money for the bare minimum amount of currency. And I respect that, and I like that, and I'm not closed-minded to it, even though I don't really believe it's my thing. But that right there could be the larger denomination purpose. And as for pretty much standard denomination, let's just say one, two, three, four, five ounces of silver, pretty easy to work with, easiest to work with, I would believe, simple, most people should be able to fork over the cash for it, small transactions right now with spot price being only $25 and change, stack price being about $30 and change, spot plus five, that's what stack price is, and depending on what these pieces are. So you can see on screen, I got some one ounces, I got some five ounces, I got some 10 ounces. That Aztec calendar round right there, that's a five ounce piece of silver. Silver eagles, kangaroos, maple leaves, those are one ounce. So the different denominations and they're different pieces of silver from different countries as well, some government minted, some not, I think they're incredibly easy to work with, especially for small transactions. Now, I also wanted to talk about the 90% silver as well, because in my opinion, I think the quarters, dimes, and half dollars could potentially be the most practical. They could probably come in handy the most because they give you the ability to break a troy ounce or make change for a troy ounce no different than trading a one piece of paper dollar for four post 64 quarters. All you're doing is making change. That's all it is when it comes to currency. Now, when it comes to money, it's a little bit different, but it's almost exactly the same. If you have a troy ounce of silver, you can exchange that for four quarter ounce pieces of silver when it comes to rounds and bars, those carry a significantly higher premium. 
So what I choose to do is use 90% silver quarters, dimes, and half dollars because each half dollar is approximately one third of a troy ounce of silver. So three of those for a troy ounce. Silver quarters, about six of them equate to a troy ounce. So each one is about one sixth of a troy ounce of silver. And then as for silver dimes, each one of them is about one fourteenth of a troy ounce of silver. So you get 14 of them to equate to roughly a troy ounce of silver. You need half an ounce of silver, grab seven silver dimes. You need five sixths of a troy ounce of silver, grab five silver quarters. You need two thirds of an ounce of silver, grab two silver half dollars. Very easy to work with. I know the numbers are kind of strange. It's easier working with solid denominations, one ounce, two ounce, five ounce, 10 ounce, 20 ounce, etc., rather than one fourteenth or one sixth or one third. I know it could be a little bit weird, but if you can count up to 14, you can very easily figure it out. It's not that hard. It's actually quite simple. And not only that, it's fun to diversify. Now, I personally don't have too wide of a variety of all different silver coins, rounds, and bars from all over the place. Of course, right here on screen, you can see that I have like a little bit of everything. I like to have a variety of different pieces on screen when I make my videos. But for me personally, my stack, for the most part, consists of silver eagles. Now, I haven't picked up any since early last year. It's been over a year. Since I've picked up any Silver Eagles, I pre-ordered the Type 2s, but it's a little bit different. The base of my stack, the foundation of my stack, would be the American Silver Eagle. Second in command would be the Canadian Maple Leaf. I have tons and tons of Maple Leafs as well. I also have my fair share of generic Silver Rounds. I also have a decent sized stack of 10 ounce Silver Bars. And I have bags upon bags upon bags of 90%. So everything that I talked about in this video, that's pretty much what my stack is made up of. I would say 95% of my stack is that right there. And the other 5% are just miscellaneous pieces, such as that Aztec calendar round right there, or the Kraken right there, or some Queen's Beasts, or Philharmonics, Kangaroos, Britannias, etc., etc., etc. Now, that's just when it comes to silver. When it comes to gold, it's a little bit different, for me at least. Now, I'm not stacking gold for the same reason that I'm stacking silver for. In fact, my entire stack of gold consists of one one gram gold bar, a handful of 10 ounce and quarter ounce gold coins, and that's it. I don't have all that much gold. I have my fair share of gold. The amount of gold I have in comparison to how much silver I have to me doesn't make very much sense, which is why I'm trying to lean a little bit more in the direction of gold while still prioritizing silver. But those are different metals for completely different reasons. And by the way, for the record, I do not stack platinum. I don't plan on stacking platinum. I have no desire to stack platinum. And I could say the exact same about palladium. Now, I'm not against either of those metals, and I'm not against rhodium either. I think they're excellent metals, and I'm all for diversification. I respect all of the precious metals. It's just for me personally, I choose to stick to silver and gold, and that's how I plan on keeping it. And when it comes to gold, by the way, all I've been doing for the last year or so is picking up some miscellaneous gold coins from miscellaneous countries. I just thought it was a pretty interesting or a fun idea to see if I can pick up 10 different 10th ounce gold coins from 10 different countries. I was working on something that I was calling the International Troy Ounce of Gold, which I would like to complete, but my focus right now is just gold, period. It doesn't have to be a specific gold coin. I'm just going after the physical gold. I have no desire to pay a significantly higher premium just to complete the international troy ounce. It would be fun, but right now I'm just going to go for the lowest possible premium gold, such as the Britannia, such as the Maple Leaf. Who knows? Maybe this summer when the Type 2 Gold Eagle fractional coins come out, maybe that'll make sense. I would like to get myself 
Well, honestly, I would like to get myself a half ouncer, but depending on my currency situation at the time, I'd be just as happy with a quarter ouncer. Either of the two. Assuming that the premium is fair, assuming that the price is right. But coming around full circle, I'm a big believer in diversification. It's something that I've been saying for several years now. I've been stacking for about three and a half years, and I've been saying it since the very beginning. I've been saying it since before I even started stacking silver and gold. I never want to keep all my eggs in one basket. I never want to rely entirely on just one thing. I think it's important to have a couple of different projects or a couple of different assets or a couple of different ideas or a couple of different whatever to lean on that way if one gets taken away at least you still have three four five six others rather than just leaning on one thing and that thing gets taken away and you fall on your face so i'm a big believer in diversification and this entire video was pretty much talking about diversifying the way you diversify so i want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic and how do you diversify when it comes to stacking the precious metals and if anybody's interested in joining the precious metals vip club it's where i can do things on my own terms not on youtube's terms my terms i'm hosting privately held live streams they're smaller and easier to manage i'm posting exclusive vip only adventure vlogs i also do giveaways discounts personalized promo codes shout outs deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a variety of different websites and of course you can watch all of my videos early and commercial free come join the precious metals vip club it'll be the first link in the description you're invited i'd be happy to have you and if you guys enjoyed today's video please hit that like button if you guys like me make sure to hit that subscribe button like a karen hits a bus window also subscribe to my second channel which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Bunch of brand new videos over there. I posted one about China banning cryptocurrency, one about AT&T cutting its dividend, other videos about real estate, videos about silver, videos about gold, and a bunch of others. Go check them out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 3,000 subscribers. We just hit 2,000, and I appreciate that. And if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products. T-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations, such as the recently released Kraken Stackin' t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug inspired by the beautiful two ounce silver kraken coin which by the way is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for ocean cleanup charity organizations at no additional cost to you it comes out of my pocket not yours and of course last but not least the brand new dydss karen free zone t-shirt hoodie sticker and coffee mug my name is not karen any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again. What are your thoughts on everything shared in today's video? When it comes to diversifying the way you diversify, we don't have to talk about the business, stocks, and real estate in this video. That's what yesterday's video was about. So if you want to talk about that, go on over to that video. I'll try to respond to your your comments as many of them as I can but in today's video I want to talk about the precious metals exclusively and diversifying the way that we stack for example if you're pretty much all in on silver it's never a bad idea to consider diversifying with a little bit of gold as well and when it comes to the silver that you're stacking and the gold that you're stacking it's never a bad idea to consider diversifying what you're stacking specifically. It doesn't have to be 100% Canadian Maple Leafs. It doesn't have to be 100% Silver Kilo Bars. You can mix and match it up. Different denominations, maybe some Kilo Bars, maybe some 5-ounce Bars, maybe some 1-ounce Coins, maybe some Fractional, or some 90%, or some 40%. When it comes to gold, different Coins from different countries of different denominations, 
tenth ounce, quarter ounce, half ounce, full ounce, if you have the cash for it, two ounce, who knows? Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. And also remember, I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing on this channel is financial advice. Do your own research, form your own opinions, make your own decisions based off of your conclusions, not mine. But head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.